Hey cool worlds, it's David. So this video is gonna be a little bit different to our usual content on this channel. Normally here we talk about science and research coming out of our group and new discoveries in the field of exoplanets. Today, uh, I really couldn't resist this. There is a new movie trailer all about astronomers who are looking for transiting planets. Yes, a movie trailer about astronomers. And I wanted to give my reaction and thoughts about it because I mean, how often is that opportunity going to come up? How often is there going to be a movie about astronomers? Um, so I wanted just to, I've only seen the trailer, the film's not out yet, but I thought it'd be fun to go through it together. We're going to play it on here, and I'm just going to sort of give some, some reactions and feedback to it as we go through it. So first off, a bit of background about this film called Clara. Uh, I'm just going to read off Wikipedia here, the source of all knowledge. It's a Canadian science fiction film directed by Akka Sherman. It's coming out next month in September. And uh, it focuses around an astronomer called Isaac Bruno, whose obsession with searching for signs of intelligent life in the universe leads to the collapse of his personal life until he meets his new research assistant called Clara. Okay, so let's play through it. I have to say, I have watched this a couple of times online beforehand because, hey, I couldn't resist when I saw this posted. It looked pretty awesome. Um, I'm pretty excited to play this through with you and give some initial reactions when I watch it and then maybe say some things about what I think they did well versus not so well from a professional perspective, of course. Uh, so let's do it. Let's go through this. Wow. Big transiting planet straight off the bat. Sun, granulation, star spots. It's nice. Us. Oh, man. Tragic stuff. Okay. It's just this total cosmic accident. It seems pretty downbeat. Helix Nebula. Awesome. Over a hundred billion stars in the galaxy. That's right. Oh, Tess, here we go. No sign. It's lettering. A class, he's popular. Else. What's your she's name? Paying the Helix. Clara? Okay, so she's I've wondered resistance. almost every single day of my life what else could be out there. Haven't you? Yes. That was that. You're gonna find other planets that are as similar as possible to Earth in mass and temperature. Yeah. It's a figure Got for it. your paper right there. Another Earth. We can find life. <laughs> That's this interesting pitch to the research assistant. I both know that there is something out there. Well, I've always had the feeling that the universe can still surprise us. Wow. I think you too. Do you know what people are scared of most? Death. Oh, no. Oh, this is sure that's appropriate to the end of the research system. Oh my god! We cannot draw any wild conclusions. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> Isaac, you need to stop this. You are not thinking this is real. We can push the boundaries of everything we know. Look, if you spend all your time looking up at the stars, you're gonna miss what's right in front of you. You trust data more than you trust yourself. Because I'm objective! No! It. You're lost! No, no. I think I found something. Oh, he's found an alien. Whew. Okay. Uh, awesome. I love it. Uh, it's pretty cinematic. Uh, it's definitely not like supposed to be a documentary fly on the wall of what being an astronomer is like, but hey, that's not really the point. It's a piece of entertainment. Um, so... Tell you what, I would be first in the line to buy a ticket for this thing. It looks pretty damn awesome. So let me say a few like really positives about this. Uh, the visuals are beautiful. I really liked some of the visualizations here, like right at the start where we have this transiting planet in front of the sun and you've got all the activity of the star is so clear. I mean, that's kind of what the problem of detecting planets is all about, that the stars are active. They're not just these quiescent light bulbs and that makes it difficult to detect planets. So. Okay, they didn't get into the details of that, but I like the visualization a lot. The other scientific thing I like about this trailer, apart from the visuals, is that there is an attention to detail and trying to make it realistic. I, you know, to a certain degree, there's definitely some, some passes there, but there's definitely an effort to try to make it realistic. So we have like the test launch, for instance, and we have the footage from that. Um, and TESS, of course, is going to be the next survey for, for transiting light curves. So that's great. The NASA press briefing, which kind of looks, you know, legit, more or less like a press briefing. The figure here of the transiting planet is pretty much bang on. That's, you know, that's a figure that you might draw in a class or something. And I like the fact that they're not, uh, sometimes you see 
astronomers depicted as they've always got their eye to the to the eyepiece and looking up into the sky. And there's a couple of shots where they do that with an with a small telescope, but it doesn't really imply that that's how he makes his discovery because that's not really how discovery works. You don't put your eye to an eyepiece anymore and make a huge discovery. He's obviously looking at this test data set, so he's a he's a data scientist, and I think it actually fairly represents that. So. Uh, that was pretty cool as well. Finally, although it's not in the trailer, I think a cool thing about the film, which I've learned from online, is that it's supposedly this astronomer finds signatures of advanced civilizations in, in these transit light curves, what we would call a techno signature. And actually there's a workshop that I'm helping to organize just next month all about techno signatures. And this is something that a lot of astronomers are getting increasingly interested in trying to look for as a way of detecting civilizations. So, okay, it doesn't feature directly in the trailer, um, but I think that's a pretty awesome connection to real life science. Okay, so those were some positive reactions, um, but of course I had some reservations watching this as well. So uh, these aren't necessarily negative, they just kind of made me giggle and think that's a little bit unrealistic when, it, when I watched it. Um, this first one I'm gonna show here is when he meets his research assistant. Okay, so there's nothing wrong, it's perfectly realistic to, to meet somebody in an art gallery or whatever this is, uh, depicting the Helix Nebula, but What's slightly strange is that this is the way that he hires his research assistant. That's a, that's a little bit of a stretch for me. I mean, normally if you're gonna hire a research assistant, you would you know, post it on WS Job Registry or something, you'd have CVs come in, you'd interview candidates, and you'd try and make sure it was a fair and balanced process. It's a little bit um, unusual, and I think you'd, you'd actually have issues at the, you know, with the university if you just bumped into someone and offered them a job. I think really you have to uh, post these jobs online and make sure they're publicly advertised. You can't just pick someone off the street and say you're going to be my research assistant. So, um, and that's just to you know avoid like conflict of interests. Which, let's face it, there appears to be some conflicts of interest with their relationship here. So, um, that's another slightly hesitant thing I have about this. He obviously seems to develop some kind of relationship with Clara. It's not quite clear from the trailer how close they become, but they're seeing like dancing together, holding hands, you know, hugging each other in the workplace as well in some of these scenes. And that, you know, that's, that's pretty unprofessional, uh, to be honest with you. Um, you really could get in a lot of trouble doing that these days. So I would uh, think that that would be something he should avoid as given that he's the boss of this research assistant. I don't think that's something I would be uh, comfortable <laughs> with with seeing one of my colleagues do so um, that's that's a slightly unrealistic thing but I guess they're trying to do this for to, to have some love story element to the to the film so I have to say by far my favorite moment by far is this moment right here where it looks like he's chatting to another colleague maybe a, another professor in the department who's a little bit wiser and older perhaps and he's I'm guessing the, the, the setup here is he's showing him the transit light curve for which he thinks he has you know, evidence of this alien civilization in it. And he's showing him the data and saying, look, this is a detection of a techno signature essentially. And this guy quite reasonably says, I would think, I think any colleague I showed this to would have this reaction <laughs> if, it was, if I could put myself in Isaac's shoes for a moment. Uh, you shouldn't jump to wild conclusions based off this little dip in your light curve. Could be an instrumental effect, could be stellar activity, could be, uh, I don't know, like dust in the system. Who knows what it could be? And uh, don't jump to wild conclusions. And Isaac's reaction is, yeah, we should jump to wild conclusions. Um, we can, we should do that. So that kind of blows, blows me away a bit. Um, he's a little bit married to the idea of this being a civilization at this point, and that's pretty dangerous for a scientist to be operating under that, uh, under that mindset. But maybe I'm completely taking this out of context, but just watching the trailer, that, that jumps out at me. It's kind of a, a, funny, a funny, unrealistic scene. And the only other thing I want to call out on this is that it's really depicting this story as like the solo white male astronomer genius who goes away and sort of does everything, really. And he's very introverted. It's kind of really playing up to stereotypes of what a scientist is and looks like. You know, even though there's this research assistant who's a woman helping him, it's, it's really, at least the trailer sort of depicts that he's the genius and that he's kind of teaching her how things work and stuff and she's kind of uh, just amazed to be a part of the journey. So it doesn't seem like a balanced relationship in terms of their expertise or at least that even she's has really any expertise from, from at least what the trailer presents. 
So that's kind of like a slightly concerning way of presenting it from, uh, you know, in terms of trying to make astronomy more gender diverse and more balanced these days. That's not a great depiction. We don't really want to be encouraging that. And then finally, the last thing I'll say that's maybe not unrealistic, but certainly uncommon, is the idea that he's working in a very, very small team, maybe even just him himself, really, to discover this signal. Normally, astronomy and exoplanet hunters work in cooperation and collaboration in often very large teams. So the idea that it's, you know this most amazing discovery just happens from one person, it's not like it never happens. And maybe even at the Cool Worlds Lab, we are almost an example of that because we often do work in very small teams. But it's pretty unusual. We're pretty unusual in doing that. And it's not necessarily a completely realistic depiction of how most scientific teams work. Um, but I, that's why I'm only gently pushing back on that one. I wouldn't say that's a major criticism. So that's my reaction. I'm going to stop now because the sky has gone very dark. It's pouring down the rain. I'm sure you can barely see me anymore because I don't have any lights in here. Um, but all I want to say is that despite my friendly criticism, I'm really excited about seeing this film. I hope you are too. Let me know your thoughts and reactions about what you thought about this trailer as well. I'm interested to hear whether you're going to be uh, queuing up to see this. I'm not sure how widely released it will be. Maybe we'll have to hunt around for cinemas to find this, but uh, it looks like a cool film to check out. Obviously the point of this film is to depict what it's like to be an astronomer, and maybe there are some things which are a little bit unrealistic in the depiction of this, but if you are interested in what it really is like to be an astronomer, I want to highlight an awesome channel you should go check out, a YouTube channel by James Davenport, Jim Davenport. He's a colleague of mine. He's working on looking at the stars which planets go around using Kepler data, using test data like we just saw in this trailer. If you want to see what it's really like to be an astronomer, check out his blog channel. I'm going to put a link down below for that and you'll get a natural realistic sense of what his day-to-day -day life is like. And honestly, it's pretty similar to, to any, anyone else's schedule on astronomy as well, I'd say. Okay, so I'm going to call it a day there. Um, thanks for checking it out and let me, let me know below what you think about this trailer. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. I think I found something.